based in Lower Manhattan, uh, New York. Uh, Kevin McCuff, glad to have you with us. So uh, we've got a lot to uh, get to today. Uh, I hope you had a, a fantastic weekend. Uh, this is AFA Today on AFR Talk, uh, the, but uh, the the news did not slow down, and in fact, uh, there are some things that we definitely uh, need to talk about this morning, uh, this afternoon, whatever time it is where you're at, uh, and we're uh, we're glad to be able to do that. Uh, by the way, uh, I love to have my phone lines open, and I love to uh, talk to you, so uh, we're going to do that uh, all show long, and uh, be glad to uh, uh, take your calls. Kevin McCullough is my name, 888-589-8840 is my phone number, 888-589-8840 is my phone number. And uh, we've got uh, um, uh, some, some really um, uh, rather significant developments in some of the uh, scandal stuff that we had been reporting uh, for a little while, uh, back uh, you know, a few months ago and then uh, in uh, just this last week. Uh, I've got a brand new piece that's uh, uh, at onenewsnow.com titled uh, hashtag why haven't you resigned. If you haven't used the hashtag, please feel free to do that. We're we're attempting to draw attention to the fact that uh, Dr. Susan Rice, uh, if she was uh, a person that desired any type of, uh, I don't know, reputable reputation following her time uh, when the political hackery that is the uh, Obama administration is over, she She's going to wish she had done what uh, Hillary Clinton and Leon Panetta did, and that was uh, not stick around. Uh, but instead, she she has stuck around, and she has continued to be, um, I don't know, um, increasingly problematic uh, by her presence uh, in ignoring the issues that she was associated with that she didn't have to be. This is the really weird part about Dr. Rice's involvement in Benghazi. She didn't have a role to play. She didn't have anything that she needed to do. There was no requirement for her to get involved. At the time, she was just the ambassador to the U.N. And ambassadors to the U.N. don't have to do much of anything. They sit there and they wait for the U.N. to say something, and then they give our response. And, you know, they're the official host when the president comes up and does his thing at the uh, General Assembly uh, once a year. But it's not like she really had to... Uh, to to delve into anything, and yet she chose to insert herself in it, and in doing so, uh, then lied to the American people uh, five times on one Sunday morning uh, talk show circuit, uh, and now she's uh, been discovered uh, for the liar that she is, and she's still holding on, uh, even doing political lunches last uh, week, late last week, and uh, evidently doing a new stand-up routine called Danged If I Know, which is how she answered the question that somebody asked in all sincerity, uh, d- do you think that the select committee on Benghazi will make any difference? And that was her response, Danged If I Know. Uh, so anyway, I'd love for you to go read the piece. It's at onenewsnow.com. Uh, Why haven't you resigned is the name of it, uh, and we would uh, encourage you to do that. Uh, I, I do want to get to a couple of other stories, though, because, and, and I want to, I want to, I want to ask you this very uh, what may seem complicated or complex problem. Um, there's a there's a there's a piece that was put out by of all places NPR. Um, and it's it it it's titled "The Merits of Income Inequality: What Is the Right Amount?" And I think this is going to make a fascinating conversation because I want to I do I do want to talk to you about what the right amount of income inequality is. Um, we we hear that term, and we're told by leftists and progressives all the time that it is a bad thing. That income inequality is in 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 and of itself immoral. But I'm curious as to how many of us <clears throat> actually believe that. Triple eight five eight nine eight eight four zero. Triple eight five eight nine eight eight four zero. Now the first part of this article that uh, they they published on NPR today called "The Merits of Income Inequality: What's the Right Amount." There's there's several many dozen paragraphs that start out uh, in, in, income inequality is a big problem. Many economists agree uh, inequality in the U.S. has risen to levels not seen since the 1920s. The top one percent pocket more than 20 percent of the nation's income and the 400 richest people in the country own more wealth than everyone in the bottom 50 percent. That's not healthy, says Branko Milanovic, an economist at the University of New York Graduate Center. 
Uh, he says it makes some people excluded or poor and unable to actually, for example, go to school, complete studies, contribute to society. That hurts individuals, and it hurts the broader economy. Then there's a French economist that they quote, uh, Tom Piketty has warned in his bestseller, Capital in the 21st Century, that inequality is likely to grow. That's because capitalism tends to reward the owners of capital with a greater and greater share of the economy's output. Meanwhile, eight wage earners get a smaller and smaller share. Milanovic says the concentration of wealth is a threat to democracy, that the, the concentration of wealth is an actual threat to democracy. The elites start dominating the political discourse and even political decision-making, and then they reinforce their own privilege. Still, Milanovic says some level of inequality is needed to make capitalism work. Whoa, hold on a second. I just thought you spent all that time talking about how it was a terrible thing. And this is what I'm this is what I'm a touch confused about, friends, because, you know, we, we, we do have today. There's a, a by the way, primary elections going on in six states. And if you're in one of the states where you need to vote, you should be voting today. You can't complain down the road if you don't get the candidate that you wanted for the general election. If the uh, if the campaign, if the uh, election was held, the primary election was held in your state today and you didn't do anything about it. Uh, you, you, you don't get to complain anymore. But, but I want us to think this through because there's going to be a lot of people say a lot of things about income inequality. And I would like to know, number one, what makes income inequality? Is it primarily the concentration of wealthy people being wealthy? Is that what creates income inequality? Uh, I'd also like to know your ideas about fixing it what 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 do you what do you honestly believe is something that we should and could be effective at doing in changing the amount of income that people have and lastly i would like to know if you believe that income inequality by itself is a uh, moral or immoral or amoral um existence uh, because when we when we attach terms like equality and inequality to something, there is this implied morality that most people at least think of when it, it and inequality is not even it's not even a moral term. It's a mathematical term. It means that uh, portion A is not uh, the the same value as portion B. Whatever, whatever the two portions are, one is not of the same value. So then you have to know what, what constitutes value. You have to understand uh, what creates value, what holds value, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, you can give, for example, you can give two people a $100 bill, okay? And one person goes and buys uh, a Briggs & Stratton lawnmower, a few gallons of gas, um, a little bit of copy paper and a marker. He makes copies, creates flyers, uh, goes and mows uh, 10 to 20 yards and turns his $100 into uh, $1,000. Okay? Uh, you give the same $100 bill to uh, person B, and they go buy uh, 10 lottery tickets with it. And uh, they could, they could come back with, Thirty million dollars, or they could come back with zero dollars. See, you had the same value; the same value was given to both people. But what made the difference in terms of how they grew what that what that gift was to them? Now, if the lottery winner comes back and goes, "Man, I I, I bought a lottery ticket and I got thirty million dollars." How long do you think it's going to be before he ever goes and buys a lawnmower and some uh, copy paper and tries to start a business? Probably never. That's probably a good guess. Do you think he may buy just a gazillion more lottery tickets over time? Yeah. And do you think he's going to win on any more of them? <laughs> no. But the likelihood that he's gonna make that he's gonna win the the thirty million dollars to begin with isn't isn't even realistic because you know it, he has a greater chance of being struck by lightning twice than than winning the lottery. 
So if you, so if we're establishing value, you have the hundred dollars, you give it to both people, and then let's say you give it to uh, ten times the amount of people that those two people represent. So you have uh, you have a hundred people that you've given a hundred dollars to, and these hundred dollars, uh, these people in this line all go and start lawn mowing businesses, and the other persons uh, all buy lottery tickets. Now, at the end of the next week, which do you think will have built the most amount of inherent, inherent value in terms of what that money consisted of? Most likely the ones that went and started the business. So the value of what they turned that $100 into turned into in far exceeding amount on average than the people buying the lottery tickets. Okay, we never talk about what contributes to equality or inequality in terms of marketplace value and dollars and so forth, but we have to. So this NPR article, and I read you some of it, I'm going to read you some more of it when we come back, but they try to say that while income inequality is unjust, and they spend the first 12 uh, paragraphs talking about that, suddenly one of the economists out of left field goes, but you have to have income inequality. Why is that? Why do you have to have income inequality um, in order for society to function properly? Is income inequality immoral, moral, or amoral? Uh, What do we do about it? And uh, and what do you what do you think when that word goes through your uh, your your brain? Income inequality, uh, particularly because you're going to be assaulted with it in this election cycle. 888-589-8840. 888-589-8840. I want to know your thoughts. 888-589-8840. 888-589-8840. And if you have not yet read and then forwarded on uh, my newest syndicated column, it's at onenewsnow.com. I think it's on the slider at the top of the page, actually. You can go and you can click on McCullough. Uh, why haven't you resigned? Please do so. I'm continuing my campaign. Uh, to uh, beg, plead, borrow, or steal a way to find Susan Rice uh, to motivate her to step down from her position as National Security Advisor. This would be, if she decided to do that, this would be a kind of a devastating blow to the Obama loyalists. And I don't have any expectation that she's going to, but I certainly want enough people asking the question as to why she should, because that also reflects upon President Obama and Hillary Clinton, the current president and the person that a lot of people say is going to be the next president, uh, I hope and praying every night that that is not, in fact, uh, the case. Uh, but I, I want to today I, I want to focus in on this idea that there is such a thing as income inequality and what makes it, what causes it, how do we solve it, should we solve it, is it moral, amoral, immoral, uh, how do you view what is often thrown around with a lot of uh, moral weightiness to it, the term income inequality, 888-589-8840, 888-589-8840, always glad, always eager to uh, chat with you um, to, to see how we can obliterate some confusion, how we can go from obliterating the confusion to uh, amplifying truth, and then out of amplifying truth, pursuing clarity, really It doesn't matter if you amplify truth if you're not pursuing clarity once you know what truth is. The goal is to have a different life at the end of the day because of it. Kevin McCullough is my name. I'm so glad that you're with us each weekday. Uh, Stay with us as we continue live from New York, the shadow of the Freedom Tower, just across from the 9-11 Memorial and Museum, and now just north of the uh, Trinity uh, Historic Cemetery. We, We return right after this with AFA Today on AFR Talk. 